Hi, everyone. Welcome to Global Compliance Panel's live webinar on Design History File, Device Master Record, and Device History Record, Principles of Lean Document and Lean Configuration. My name is Liz, and I'm going to be your host today. On behalf of the Global Compliance Panel team, I would like to thank you for being part of this event. Today's webinar will be presented by Jose Mora. Jose is a principal consultant specializing in manufacturing, engineering, and quality systems. For over 29 years, he has worked in the medical device industry, specializing in manufacturing, process development, tooling, and quality systems. Prior to working full-time as a consulting partner for Adzari Consulting, Jose served as Director of Manufacturing Engineering at Boston Scientific and as a Quality System Manager at Stryker Orthopedics, where he introduced process performance, problem solving, and quality system methodologies. Jose worked for 10 years at Cordis Corporation, now a Johnson & Johnson company, where he led the successful tooling process development and qualification of CODIS first PTA catheter. We are honored to have such a distinguished person such as Jose Mora with us to present this webinar. Ladies and gentlemen, before uh, we begin, I would like to inform you of the program outlined for this training session. This webinar is for 16 minute duration. First, Jose will take you through today's webinar, highlighting the areas that would be covered and he would then share with you his presentation. We would like to inform you that all participants once part of this teleconference have been placed on mute and will remain so until the Q&A begins towards the end of this webinar. This is for the purpose of avoiding any kind of discontinuity and for allowing the presenter to speak clearly so that everyone who is present in this webinar can take maximum benefit. I also request all to hold back your question until the Q&A window begins. Ten minutes of time will be allotted for the Q&A, during which your questions will be answered. Ladies and gentlemen, now as we are all get started for this webinar, I request Jose to take it from here. Jose. Thank you, Liz, and thank you, everyone, for your participation today. We're going to... Uh, discuss some very important documents and an approach to these documents. Generally, when people think of any of quality system regulation and the, the medical device world, if you could sum it up in one sentence, it would be document what you're going to do and then present documented evidence of what you did. Within that, there are three major uh, comp compilations of documents that guide the entire design of the device, and those are the design history file, the device master record, and the device history record. Um, a little bit about the companies I represent. Um, Adzari Consulting is a consulting firm that, that provides service to the life science companies in the areas of manufacturing, engineering, and quality systems. Adzari Enterprises is dedicated to the development of lean configuration and lean documents concepts, which are the, the theme of what we'll, we will discuss today. So first, an overview of, of our, our webinar today. We're going to start with some thought-provoking images from everyday life. And it's important because many times when we walk into a medical device facility, we somehow shut out the outside world and we go into a very different world, but I, I would challenge you to not do that. And we're going to look at some thought-provoking images from everyday life because I want these to, to remain with you as we go into and delve into the problems that we, we find with control documents and the document control system in general. We're going to, after looking at those types of problems, which most of you should be familiar with, we're going to talk about how that traditional approach generates waste. We're going to explore the difference, the distinction between product information and process information, and why that distinction is important. And we're going to then arrive at a proposed theory of lean documents that kind of ties all this together. We're going to show how the theory of lean documents is really just a bridge from the concepts of lean manufacturing. And we're going to show 
how the two are related. And once we do that, we're going to present the key principles of lean documents. Now, lean documents is the paper way of doing this. And by paper, I mean, of course, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, things like that. But there is also the electronic database version of these, which would be lean configuration. And the two are very closely related. So as we present the different types of, of files, we're going to go back and forth between paper versions and configuration versions to show how these two are related. So once we've done that, you know, we're going to show the role of the design history file and then in general, and then we're going to present what a design history file looks like, a lean design history file, a lean device master record, and a lean device history record. So let's start with some thought-provoking images from everyday life. And these are experiences that we all have, and I hope that you'll look at these experiences in a, in a different way and kind of file that away in your mind. When you go into a restaurant, you are there as a customer to enjoy the meal, and there's a document handed to you that I like to call that a single function document. Perhaps it has a second function, but we would agree that the main function of that document is to show you what are the options that you have as far as what you can order and be served. A second function that most restaurants use is to show you the price that goes with those choices. However, not all restaurants do that. There are some that if, if they don't show the price, well, you might, you know, they have, there are certain restaurants that do that, so that's, that's what happens. I think we would all agree, though, that you would not expect to see a recipe of how to make that dish. If you happen to have an interest in that, you might talk to somebody else. But we would agree, we would not expect to see the instructions on how to cook the meal on the menu. That, that seems to make sense, right? We go there to enjoy the meal. We're not there to cook the meal. Um, in traffic, we see signs, and signs are a different type of document, but really they're there to convey information. Now, signs come in colors and shapes, and they have a, a very distinct purpose. That is to quickly transmit information. In the case of a stop sign, it's to tell you to stop. However, we would not expect detailed instructions in that stop sign. Now, imagine what would happen to traffic if every driver had to stop and read the instructions. You can imagine what that would do just to the traffic flow. But believe it or not, that's just the tip of the iceberg. Because stop signs don't just come from the stop sign tree. Somebody has to design them, place them there, and maintain them. So now imagine if you are the city's Department of Traffic and Transportation, and now that we have instructions, we have to know which version of which stop sign is kept at which intersection throughout the whole municipality. Okay, now we see, now we begin to see what a complex mess that would create. And that's just stop signs. Imagine if yields and other types of signs had the problem. And believe it or not, I, I, re, I actually relate to that during a summer job in my college days. I worked at the Dade County, Florida Department of Traffic and Transportation. So I have an idea what, what is involved in something like that. But just try to imagine the, the mess, the, the bureaucracy that that would involve. Another thing is, as you're driving your car, you, your, your car will probably come with an owner's manual that shows you how to operate the car. One thing we would not expect to find in that owner's manual is a map of New Hampshire. Now, if you happen to live in New Hampshire, that would be very convenient. But if you're in Arizona, a map of New Hampshire, you, New Hampshire would not be very useful. So I think we can agree that there's a reason why these are separate documents. One shows you how to operate the car, and that's what the product is. The other one has to do with the location where the product will be used. And there are some very good logistical reasons why those two do not belong together. They're, se they're just simply separate documents with separate functions and a very different type of use. Now, so another mode of transportation that, that many people use, um, those are buses, OK? So in typical bus schedules, we have the, the times, the route, and the stops. Now, somebody might have a, a really brilliant idea of 
putting the shows that are playing on each route that week. Now that sounds like a wonderful idea, but imagine trying to maintain such a system. You not only need to know the routes of the buses, but now you need to keep up with what each theater is presenting that week. And, and if a change happens, well, you've got to reprint the, the schedules. So the, the theater schedule is what I refer to as variable information, information that constantly changes. Whereas the bus route, maybe it'll get updated every three months, but it's not something that changes every day. Unless, of course, we introduce variable information into that. So we can see how that would dramatically increase the complexity and the logistics of trying to maintain and publish such a thing. So if all of these things make sense, we now walk into our meta